Let's see if you can solve this simple math problem. So here is the question. Kim has $5.95. She has $3, 5 quarters, no pennies, and no dimes as well. So the question is, how many nickels does she have? All right, now feel free to use a calculator, but uh, if you think you know the answer, put that into the comment section. I'm going to show you the correct solution in just one second. Then, of course, I'm going to solve this problem step by step. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I've been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help in math, come on over to my site, tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. All right, so one more time, here is the problem. So Kim has $5.95. So she has three dollars, five quarters, no pennies, and no dimes as well. So how many nickels does she have? All right, so let's take a look at the answer. The correct uh, solution here is 34 nickels. Now, if you got this right, well, you definitely get a happy face and an A+. Plus. And if you're like, uh, Mr. YouTube Math Man, what's going on? Well, this is not that difficult. Of course, we need to understand uh, how to uh, work with dollars and cents. And if you're a bit confused here about uh, U.S. currency, let me just do a quick uh, uh, review here. So $1 is equal to 100 cents, okay? Now a quarter is equal to 25 cents. And by the way, the symbol for dollar is this, and the symbol for cents is this, okay? Dollars, this is a dollar bill, so it's a piece of paper. And then quarters, pennies, nickels, and dimes are uh, coins. All right, a penny is worth one cent, a nickel is worth five cents, and a dime, and we're not talking about dimes in this problem, is worth 10 cents. All right, so let's see how to figure out and solve this simple math money problem. All right, so let's go ahead and get into the solution. I'm gonna actually approach this in a, a couple different ways, but the first thing is, uh, obviously we've already read the problem, we'll read it one more time. So Kim has uh, $5.95 total, right? And uh, what makes up this $5.95, of course, we have to interpret the problem a little bit, is $3, right? So she has these $3 right here. Uh, she has five quarters, one, two, three, uh, four, five. She has no pennies, but then she has a bunch of nickels, right? So when we count up all this currency, it's gonna add up to this $5.95, we want to know how many nickels does she have. So probably a good approach here is to start taking away the money that we know she already has, right? So she has uh, uh, $3, right? So we already know she has $3. She has five quarters, no pennies. So let's just kind of look at what amount of money represents the total amount in nickels, right? So the way we have to figure that out is to uh, subtract away this $3, this five quarters from her total, and then we'll get the amount of nickels she has, a total amount, and then we can figure out how many nickels she has. So let's go ahead and take that approach. That's probably what most of you did. Um, and you could do it uh, in a couple different ways. As long as you're justifying or being clear about what you're doing, that's what counts. Okay, so here's $5.95. Let's take away uh, the $3 that she has. So $3, right? Uh, uh, we're going to take away $3 from this $5.95. We're going to subtract $3, $3.00, because $5.95 we're representing as a decimal. So when we subtract away $3, it's going to be 3.00. So that leaves us with $2.95 after we take away the $3. But she has some quarters as well, so let's go ahead and take away the quarters from that $2.95. All right, so how many quarters does she have? Well, the prom says she has five quarters. So how much is five quarters? Well, if I just asked you, hey, uh, I got five quarters in your brain, how much money is that? You're gonna say, well, there's one, two, three, four, uh, four quarters, that gives me a dollar, plus I have one more quarter over here for a total of five, so that's 25. So that's 125, a dollar and 25 cents, right? But the one thing about uh, money problems is this. Notice here we have $2.95. Notice that our cents is being represented as a decimal when we're using the uh, unit of measure of a dollar, 
Okay, so if here this is the two represents a dollar. This 0.95 is the cents. So um, when we want to determine how many quarters, okay, and we want to kind of represent this in a uh, dollar and cents figure, we could take that five and multiply it by 0.25 because 0.25 that's how much of a dollar a quarter is. Okay, and this is kind of the tricky part. I think for a lot of students is they might think to yourself, oh yeah, a quarter is 25, that's 25 cents. Okay, if I multiply that by five, I'm gonna get 125 cents, but you're not gonna represent things over a dollar in cents. Typically, that's not the way you're gonna do it. We're gonna be working in dollars and cents. So represent your quarters as 0.25. So five times 0.25, you get a dollar 25. All right. So, of course, we can reason through that this way as well. You didn't have to, you know, do this calculation. You probably could have been like, oh, okay, this is $1.25. I'll subtract that away. But I want you to kind of really highlight or focus in on what I'm saying here, what I'm highlighting about having uh, your cents being represented as a decimal with, a, uh, you know, like a 0.25 as being the quarter. And this is kind of informal um a lesson on money problems involving dollars and cents, but hopefully you understand what I'm saying. All right, so we have two dollars and ninety-five cents. We have a dollar twenty-five in quarters, so that leaves us when we subtract uh, the quarters away from the two ninety-five, we have a dollar seventy left. So we have no pennies, so all of this is in nickels. Okay, so we have a bunch of nickels, and we count up all the nickels, we're going to get a dollar seventy. So how many nickels is equal to $1.70? That's really what the question kind of distills down to. And let's go ahead and figure this out. Well, uh, this is basically uh, a pretty, well, it's a pretty easy problem. And a lot of you can kind of do this mentally, right? But let's just really hone in on what's going on. If we think of the value of the nickel in terms of cents, okay? So a nickel is in uh, five cents. The question is how many nickels is in a, dollar 70 this unit of measure is a dollar this unit of measure here is cents okay so anytime you're doing any word problem and there's units of measure involved dollars and cents uh, minutes and seconds miles and feet this will make a difference you have to be very aware of the unit of measure so let's just kind of think of right now that the value of the nickel, we're going to think of the, of the value of nickel of uh, being five cents, which of course it is, but we still need to figure out how many uh, five cent units is in this dollar seventy. So let's go in and just think about the problem this way. So a dollar seventy is the same thing as one dollar plus seventy cents. Okay, so one dollar plus seventy cents. So this is in dollars, right? I want to think of a dollar in terms of cents because I'm thinking of my nickel in terms of a cent. So how many cents uh, are in one dollar? One hundred cents or in a dollar. And of course, we have 70 uh, cents right there. So this is pretty easy, OK, because I have uh, nickels being worth five cents. That's what they are. I can figure out how many nickels are in uh, 100 cents. So it's 100 divided by five, right, is going to be 20 nickels. OK, that's how uh, many nickels there are in one dollar, right? How many nickels are, are there in 70 cents? Or again, this one dollar is 100 cents. So 70 cents divided by five, you're going to have 14 nickels, so 20 and 14 together is 34 nickels. So that's one way to reason through the problem, okay? Uh, again, uh, you could have done this problem slightly different. It's perfectly fine. As long as you understand, you can kind of justify your conclusions. That is, um, you know, that's really what counts in, in solving a math problem. Okay, so 34 nickels, but let's go ahead and look at this problem differently. Let's think of a value of nickel as being so I hope you're learning something from this video. And if that's the case, make sure to subscribe and hit that bell notification. This really does help me out on YouTube. Now, if you need additional help in math, make sure to check out my full main math courses. You can find links to those in the description of this video. So let's go ahead and get back to the problem. Uh, 0.05 of a dollar, okay, not five cents, but 
five one hundredths of a dollar. Because how many, what's the value of a nickel out of 100 cents? Well, a nickel is five out of 100. 100 cents is one dollar. Okay, so, so 0.05 of a dollar is a nickel. Okay, or five one hundredths of a uh, five one hundred. Of course, this is cents. This represents a dollar. It's the same thing. So the key is this. When you're dealing with money proms, it's, uh, and you want to leave your unit of measure as a dollar, you typically want to do that, your cents are going to be in decimal. So you got to be very careful with that. So here, when if I think of the value of a nickel as being uh, 0.05 of a dollar, I can simply just straight away take my dollar seventy, okay, and divide it by point. This is one dollar and seventy cents, and I'm going to divide it by 0.05 of a dollar. I'm working with dollars and dollars here, okay? So dollar seventy divided by a uh, 0.05 of a dollar, which is what five one hundredths of a dollar, which is of course five cents. Uh, 1.70 divided by 0.05 on your calculator, you'll see you'll get this lovely answer here, 34, which of course is 34 nickels in a dollar uh, 70. Now, if you need additional help in basic math, check out these two courses right here. So the first is my Math Foundations course. This is a, a quick review of basic math. Now, if you want to review uh, basic math, algebra, and geometry, then check out my Math Skills Rebuilder course. I'm going to leave uh, links to both of these courses in the description of this video. All right, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.